Good afternoon. My name is Ben Glassman. I am the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Ohio. I am joined this afternoon by my first assistant, U.S. Attorney V. Paul Patel, as well as Todd Wickerham, the special agent in charge of the FBI Cincinnati Division, and Dayton Police Chief Rick Beal. And we are here to announce the arrest of uh, Ethan Colley, 24, of Kettering, who was arrested Friday evening and now stands accused by federal criminal complaint of unlawfully possessing a firearm while being a user of controlled substances and of lying on the Form 4473, the firearms form, in order to acquire a firearm, specifically indicating that he was not a user of controlled substances when, in fact, he was. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about these charges, but before I do, I want to make two things clear at the outset. One of them is that although these charges have arisen out of the investigation into the shooting that took place on August 4th in the Oregon District, uh, Mr. Colley does not stand accused of intentionally uh, participating in the planning of that shooting. We have no evidence of that. There's no allegation of that. So I just want to make that clear from the outset. And then secondly, I want to give the disclaimer that I always give in discussing the federal criminal charges, which is that um, Mr. Colley, like all criminal defendants, is presumed innocent unless and until he's proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt by the United States with evidence in court. And the allegations of a federal criminal complaint are just that. They are allegations. They are not evidence. So with that disclaimer, I'll tell you a little bit about what the affidavit in support of the criminal complaint against Mr. Colley does say. It says that on August 4th, uh, special agents with the FBI and ATF initially spoke with Mr. Colley uh, on Sunday, August 4th, which was uh, the day uh, the day of the when the shooting had taken place early that morning. And at that time of that initial interview, Mr. Colley indicated uh, that uh, he had purchased body armor and a firearm accessory for Connor Betts, the shooter. Um, who had committed the shooting earlier that day. And during the course of that initial interview, which was at Mr. Colley's home in Kettering, agents smelled marijuana and observed in plain sight what appeared to be a bong and also what appeared to be a micro Draco pistol. Um, then later that week on Thursday, August 8th, FBI agents re-interviewed Mr. Colley, this time at his place of work. Um, and Mr. Colley indicated to the agents at that time that he was a concealed carry. Uh, he told them during the second interview that he had done, quote unquote, hard drugs with Connor Betts, as well as marijuana and acid, four or five times a week um, in, from 2014 to 2015. And then when the agents asked Colley how often he used drugs, uh, Kali indicated that he smoked marijuana every day and uh, had been doing so for about 10 years. Um, agents obtained from a federal firearms licensee the ATF Form 4473 that Kali had completed in order to purchase the micro Draco pistol uh, that agents observed upon initially interviewing him. Uh, that form was dated uh, in May 9, 2019. And on that form, Kali had indicated no in response to the question, are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any depressant, stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance? At that point, the agents obtained a federal search warrant for Kali's person and his residence. When they executed uh, the search warrant of Kali, uh, the, the search warrant of his person, he again admitted to being a regular user of illegal drugs, including marijuana and psychedelic mushrooms, which he said he grew in his residence. Um, uh, he, did, he admitted that he did remember filling out the Form 4473 and indicating falsely that he uh, was not a user of illegal drugs when in fact he was, because he knew that if he had answered it truthfully, he would not have received the firearm that he was buying. He also acknowledged uh, that he had purchased four, uh, four bets, body armor, as well as um, the upper receiver of an AR-15 weapon, 
and the 100 round double drum magazine that was ultimately used by Betts in the August 4th shooting in the Oregon district. Uh, Kali indicated that he purchased these items for Betts and stored them at Kali's residence in order to um, assist Betts in hiding the items from Betts' parents. Uh, Kali admitted to recalling approximately uh, 10 weeks earlier, so middle to end of May, uh, sitting with Betts in Kali's apartment and assembling the uh, AR-15 uh, accessory and then further that uh, a couple weeks after that when the double drum uh, magazine arrived, uh, Betts coming and taking possession of that uh, drum as well as the body armor. Um, the agents executed the search warrant of Kali's apartment. Um, they recovered the Draco pistol, the Taurus semi-automatic pistol, ammunition, drug paraphernalia, a clear glass pipe, uh, and what is commonly referred to as a bong, as well as what appeared to be mushrooms. Um, Betts was, or I'm sorry, uh, Kali was then taken into custody on Friday evening. Uh, he made his initial appearance here in federal court Friday evening and um, pursuant to a criminal complaint that is being unsealed today. Uh, these charges uh, that expose him up to a uh, possible term of imprisonment of up to 15 years in prison, uh, and the case will move forward next with a detention hearing on Wednesday. I want to make a couple quick points uh, about this case, uh, and then I will invite any questions that you may have. Uh, the points are, number one, again, to be clear, there is no evidence and no allegation in this criminal complaint that Kali intentionally uh, participated in the planning of Betts's August 4th shooting, so I don't want that to be misconstrued. And that's not what this case is about, but what this case is about is in the course of this ongoing investigation into the August 4th shooting, anyone who is discovered to have any criminal culpability for any act that ultimately uh, is discovered through the investigation or contributed in any way to the events on August 4th is going to be held criminally responsible. And more generally, uh, not only is possessing controlled substances illegal, but possessing controlled substances and possessing a firearm is itself a crime. And that is not something that federal agents who are investigating this or any matter are going to ignore. And that is why Mr. Colley has been charged in federal court. Um, Friday afternoon and unsealed her today. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. What led you to Mr. Colley so quickly on Sunday? Um, so I can't get into the specifics of exactly why that was, although you'll see that if you read the uh, affidavit in support of the criminal complaint on August 4th, there was the FBI agents and ATF agents uh, spoke with Mr. Colley uh, briefly at that time and then re-interviewed him later in the week. So. Uh, I think it's clear from reading this affidavit uh, that Mr. Colley and Mr. Betts have known each other for a long time. Were any of these things that he purchased, were, that, would he have been prohibited from purchasing them based on his drug use, like the magazine, the body armor, and the upper receiver? Uh, the the uh, magazine, the magazine, uh, no, but the you cannot possess a firearm if you are an unlawful possessor of uh, Control or user of controlled substances. Can you walk us through the process of reviewing these forms if simply lying can allow somebody to get them? Yeah, well, I mean, we have a system uh, of, uh, of transferring firearms in this country where uh, we have the ATF form 4473 is designed to make sure that anybody who does apply for a firearm to purchase it legally uh, that you catch. Uh, all those people who would be disqualified by federal law from possessing the firearm. That firearm, that form requires people to fill it out truthfully under penalty of federal prosecution. So we do rely on people being honest. If they're not honest and they're caught, they can be federally prosecuted and that is a crime that is punishable by up to five years in federal prison and that is what Mr. Colley is charged with here.
Oh, I can't speak to that. I can say that this office vigorously prosecutes anyone who has uh, falsified a Form 4473. When's the last time you prosecuted someone? Uh, we have prosecuted uh, straw purchasers routinely, including as recently as last year. Hunting is Texas back there and say that he didn't buy that gun. Why didn't he just order successfully to scrap? Why was that? So according to the affidavit in support of the criminal complaint, uh, the affidavit says that uh, Kali was involved because Betts wanted to hide the purchase of these uh, of this ammunition or of this uh, magazine, body armor, and uh, AR part from his parents. So this was stra like you know the straw man kind of situation just by buying uh, firearm equipment and parts. Like you still you're supposed to still do it yourself. Yeah, but if there that. Um, there was not an indication, for example, that um, uh, that Betts would himself have been any more or less disqualified from buying any of these things than Kali. What's the likelihood of additional charges being filed uh, at the federal level with anything in connection with that armored core vehicle? Uh, this investigation is ongoing, and um, Special Agent Charge Wickerham, would you care to speak to, to that at all? I mean, it, it's still ongoing. There's a lot that has been done in the, uh, in the past week. Um, there's still a lot to go through, a lot of evidence to review, a lot of investigation to conduct. Have you, have you gotten into the cell phone? We did get into the primary cell phone that the shooter was carrying on him uh, when he did the shooting on uh, August 4th. Yes. Did you share anything about your phone now? Uh, we're still processing and going through that. Uh, obviously, that's a high priority for us is to get through that cell phone, but uh, it was opened uh, late last week, and we are now reviewing the contents. You say Kali did not have any part of the planning of this, we haven't got any evidence of that yet. So what did he think that Betts was gonna use all of this for? What was their conversation? Um, I can't speak to exactly what he thought he was gonna use the firearm for, but we have not found any indication that he um, knew he was gonna conduct this attack. Do you anticipate any more Let me, let me take that one, actually. Uh, so as Special Agent in Charge Wickerham was saying, this investigation uh, is open and ongoing. Uh, agencies are working together uh, to make sure that every last piece of evidence is thoroughly reviewed. And I think what you can take away safely is that if anyone is found to have any criminal responsibility for any action that is discovered during the course of this investigation, it will be prosecuted. I'm not going to speak to any circumstantial evidence beyond that, which is complained in the affidavit at this stage of the proceeding. Are certificate holders ever sent for subject and drug testing? I, I cannot speak to the uh, intricacies of CCW law in Ohio. I can say that uh, I feel comfortable saying, although it's not strictly in the affidavit, that the that um, uh, Kali CCW was confiscated at the time about, of the search. Can you talk about the majority of time that he was found guilty of these alleged crimes that he's committed? What, how much time was he served? So the, the two crimes that are mentioned in the criminal complaint, one of them is a penalty of zero to five years in prison, and the other is zero to 10 years in prison. So conceivably, zero to 15 years in prison, anywhere in that range. Would this also be the case? I, I definitely cannot speak to that sort of question, how frequently this might have occurred, but I can say again that this is going to be an extremely thorough and is an extremely thorough investigation of any and all aspects that went into ultimately what happened on August 4th. Any kind of crimes, any federal crimes that are uncovered as a result of that investigation will be prosecuted fully. Are these charges or penalties? increased in severity since the weapon was used in a mass shooting, or is, will he have gotten the same charges and penalty uh, if it had not been involved, if he had just been caught with drugs? It's the same charges regardless. How long did they know each other? Did they grow up together? Did they just meet in 2014? 
Well, it's clear from the affidavit in support of the complaint that they've known each other for uh, several years, quite a few years. It indicates at least back to 2014. I believe longer, but I don't want to get into speculation about precisely how long. Well, they went to school together or anything of that nature? I don't want to get into additional evidence with that are beyond the scope of the affidavit. Did Betts actually, did he falsify any firearms reports based on this investigation, what you found here? Uh, we don't have the ability to say that he falsified forms at this time. Um, certainly, the it is what um, what Kali falsified. It, it is a crime to uh, possess a firearm or to acquire a firearm when you are an illegal drug user. Uh, so that is a crime, and we are comfortable charging that against uh, Kali at this time. The drug use alleged uh, between the two men. Did that have any? Is that significant at all to what happened uh, last weekend? Do we know that uh, Betts had been using drugs at all? Uh, I will just say that, that uh, the investigation remains ongoing. Would or could this shooting have been carried out still had the purchases not been made? Uh, I can say that the purchases that are at issue here were, um, were some of the equipment that was used in August 4. So this body armor. Uh, the uh, accessory for the AR and the double drum magazine was the equipment that was used on August 4th. What does that mean that Holly could face more serious charges than the ones you've currently uh, approved? Uh, I'm not going to speak to any additional charges other than those that are stated here. What is that accessory? What, 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 what is that? I don't know. It's a component of the AR. Um, yeah, what does it do? uh, so it's just, you can just, when you buy an AR uh, style uh, gun, uh, you, there's a, there are different components and people can assemble them themselves. So certain parts you have to acquire using the Form 4473, but then other parts can be acquired separately and put together separately, and that's what happened or is alleged to have happened in this case. What kind of part is it? Uh, just the top. The, the upper receiver. Was the actual AR hidden from the parents as well, or did they know of that? I can't speak to that. So we, we always ask you to sum up uh, a situation like this. What's your thoughts on what this means to the community, how horrific this was? Yeah, so, well, yeah, my thoughts are that I want to be clear that this investigation into what happened on August 4th is ongoing. It's going to be thorough. Uh, the FBI, Dayton police will do everything possible to get to the bottom of every piece of evidence. If any criminal wrongdoing is discovered in the course of that investigation that is capable of being prosecuted, it will. Today is an example of that. So it wasn't yeah. Uh, one more question. So it wasn't That is not charged as a crime. Thank you. Did the staff shooting case in your career been? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Yes. Thank you.